Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. And today I am thrilled to welcome the star of the Baroness Von Sketch Show and the new series on Crave, I Have Nothing, Carolyn Taylor, and of course, Sandra Bezik. Welcome to The Skating Lesson. Oh my goodness. Hello, David. <laughs> Hello, Carolyn. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. You're officially a skater slash choreographer because now you've been on The Skating Lesson. Yes. This feels like a milestone this is moment. Official. This feels yes. really huge. <laughs> it <Yeah>. is. <laughs> Carolyn, why yeah. figure skating? It um, it just came to me in a flash. Dave, do you prefer David or Dave? Dave. Dave. Thanks. Okay. David's Dave. are uptight. They're like too. They they don't have sense of humor about well, themselves. I thought you, know? you were a Dave, and then I saw David yeah, leave in the a corner of your Zoom. I thought I was a David. You know, and there no, are no. some. Okay. No, it's just that it says David on Zoom. So I just. I know. I had a Did war you, in my head. About saying, All right. Does yeah. your mom say David when she's upset? Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> well, so she was the one you were on the call with last. Time. My mom usually called me a stupid ass when she was upset, but yes, I'm <laughs> wrong with that. Yes, okay. <laughs> that's another that's another, another podcast. That's another another podcast. podcast. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, um, Dave, it really did come in a flash of inspiration. Mm. It, it truly did. Like I didn't grow up loving figure skating. Like my memories of skating as a child. I grew up in Montreal. We're like, you know, oh, my mom putting on my skates. I'm crying. They hurt. It's cold. They're frozen. They start to burn. Like my memories are, oh, I, I'm not happy. This is not easy. My ankles are going in. So as a child, like a, a small child, it was something I did, but it wasn't, I wasn't trained in it, as I'm sure you can, if you've seen the series, you'll see. <laughs> You're kidding. What? <laughs> But you I didn't start skating at what? the age of four. What? <laughs> like, didn't you take lessons of like Canadian pan skate, learn the snowplow, Sam? Like you would think, but no. I just remember being out in outdoor rinks, lousy ice. Now I'm conditioned to only want the good ice. I've, I mean, Sandra has created a monster, but yeah. um, <laughs> the ice I was exposed to as a child. Are you kidding me? I couldn't skate on that ice now. So, um, but it did come in a flash, Dave. It really was a flash of inspiration and it was an obsession with the 88 Olympics. So that to me is really, that's the fulcrum. Like that was the place through which all of these ideas were sort of filtered through. And, and my obsession in 88 was with the figure skating, you know, routines. And why 88? Again, great. Well, best Olympics in my humble opinion. Um, there, I think it was a perfect storm of, of being, you know, 14 or 15. So you're at that age where, you know, you're not really out, you haven't got your own sort of life yet, you know, and it was pre-internet. Olympics were everything. And I was glued and there was Katarina Vitt. Like it was, there was no looking away. I mean, there was no looking away, right, Sandra? Like, how do you... <laughs> How could you endure those Olympics without just being brought to your knees by the beauty and artistry of, I mean, all of those top skaters and Brian Boitano's routine, Ryan Orser. I mean, please, that was the battle of the Carmens. There was so much electricity in the mm -hmm. air, the Cold War, East, West, you know. But, you know, and it, it's interesting because you like Calgary because obviously it was a Canadian Olympics, but sure. did you go away from skating because like, where were you for Tanya and Nancy? Like what lesbian things were you doing that were you distracted? Like what? I was a late coming out person too. Dave. What age? What age? Late. Like my first real, like kind of secret, sexy, you know, les not out, oh, just gay for you kind of thing. It was like 28, you know, like I was older. So what were you doing without the skating in the 90s? Like what was going on? It's a great, I mean, I, I watched, I remember, of course, Tanya Harding and that, but I wasn't taken with her. I was like, oh, Tanya, you know, well, oh, interesting story. Nancy Kerrigan, yeah, great skater, sure. But they didn't capture my imagination. So we but your life must have been busier at that time too. I was. When you were 14 or 15, you're, you're riveted in front of the TV for the Olympics, At the whole country was. Yeah, I mean- And no. I don't think the country has stopped like that for an entire Olympics Yeah. since, right? I mean, well, Vancouver maybe, but even still the world is busier now. Mm -hmm. So I think it just, 
what was the, the perfect storm for Carolyn. Yeah, one of the things I thought was so brilliant about this series is that you talk about gender roles and how it applies to skating and and how we're all in drag performing. And I was kind of wondering mm. your point of view. Why is skating so inherently queer? Like what about it just lends itself to this lens of campiness and gender mm. expression do you find? Well, Sandra, you can, do you want to start? Do you want to answer that? Well, it's interesting that you asked that because that was one of the things that made me nervous at the beginning because of our inherent campiness. I was nervous before I met Carolyn and before we actually spoke that, that it was only the campiness that appealed to her, mm -hmm. you know, it, because being a comedian mm -hmm. and, um, and so, but that's what we are. And <laughs> I think we've got to kind of admit it, you know, I mean, we're, we can be really, really unintentionally funny. And we're afraid of it though. Like, and, But we're afraid of it and we need to laugh at it because that's mm. part of who we are. Obviously we can be, well, I think we can be many things, but we are unintentionally funny. <laughs> Aren't we, Carolyn? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, yes, the camp, of course, was, was one part of what I was drawn to, but it was the artistry, it was the drama, it was the the proficiency, like the athleticism, everything. I mean, all of it together. Mm -hmm. And then I think with this show, we are putting a queer lens on it. I mean, because I'm queer, right? And because, you know, my um, Zach Russell, another exec producer and director on the show, is queer, you know, there really um, was that sensibility. And so we really were unpacking it and and still able to look at a straight couple skating right and examining that and seeing well no you can see that through a queer lens and it is a performance and we are performing gender and these roles are just so over the top and um and that becomes really interesting when you when you look at it through that queer lens yeah and i have a question for you is why are queer people so drawn to sandra and by the end of this it seems like a lesbian icon in kind of like <laughs> a perspective on why that is Sandra? <laughs> I yeah. don't know how to answer that. <laughs> no, truly. I mean, Sandra, I mean, obviously Sandra's, you know, when we met, what was it? One of the, we were all out one night and didn't you say you were like, you thought you were like the straightest person you knew or something. And I I'm so straight, like, but I also oh. said, I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm really, really straight. But then Rihanna, like Rihanna really like kind Sandra. of was like, whoa, if I were a guy, she's amazing, right? right. And so I think that sort of Sandra. But I'm straight. <laughs> what about you and Katarina then? Well, Sandra. We are. We laugh at our sexuality. Is the truth. I mean, she works it. I work it, or I used to work it. <laughs> Maybe I still do. And we laughed at each other and laughed at ourselves with that you know so there was there was a freedom and also when i was choreographing katarina it was really fun to sort of choreograph somebody who also has curves you know and so that was that was fun to to choreograph sort of you know so we're the same height and and um well, i'm older than she is but we had the same kind of sort of sensibility about moving on the ice and so that was really fun and um freeing uh, we're just i don't know how to answer these questions <laughs> you're doing great real question sandra real uh, yeah questions. carolyn i'm curious you really play up the fish out of water mm -hmm. element in this series brilliantly mm -hmm. but you did meet Sandra Bezik, right? So the premise is you're driving in the car, you hear Queen Whitney Houston, you hear I Have Nothing, which yes. is brilliant because it's the second track on the Bodyguard soundtrack and not the obvious, yes. right? So that's already genius to begin with. And then you hear the jumps, as one does. I am hearing the that. jumps too. And you start doing this stand-up routine yes. that I have searched all of YouTube to find and cannot locate. Listen, it barely got recorded, Dave. It's yeah. ridiculous. Like the so, first Carolyn, I there's like five recordings of it in the show. Why is it not there so that we can see you going yes, like this? Fair. You know what? I should. I'm not that savvy when it comes to 
<laughs> you got a TV show made of a crazy idea. You're that savvy. I'm savvy that way. Her I'm second savvy that way, but TV I'm not show savvy with crazy like, idea. Yeah, yeah, I'm not savvy technologically. Are we, are I suppose you, I could ask someone to put it up. Are you recording it on Saturday? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I mean, maybe, maybe. I will be performing yeah. it for probably the last time um, on Saturday when we launch the show live in Toronto. Okay. So... Um, but yeah, we did get, I mean, I have a recording from a time I did it in 2019. My friend Heather recorded it on her iPhone. It has really, I think you might see it in episode six, a flash of it. Um, and I think that was, you know, January, 2019. The first time I performed it, um, was at Morning King's, um, uh, book launch for Queer Play. And I did that in 20, I think 16. I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I was like, I've got to take what's in my head and put it on the stage. At this point, do I have any idea it's actually going to happen in the real world? Absolutely not. I just think as a performance art piece, wouldn't this be interesting? And the crowd, I mean, it was electric that night and it was a wake up. It was like, whoa, okay, this is resonating, you know, and it was a very queer room. And um, yeah, and then I would just sort of perform it now and again. And then it just, I started to tell the audience, oh, I'm going to do this one day. Like, why? I don't know. I, I, I felt compelled to say, no, 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 this is actually going to happen. And they but laugh I, at me. I, yeah. And I, I think it is, it's a bit of a universal thing for anybody who's watching skating, who has watched even casually, like at the Olympics or whatever, when they do hear a song, they wonder, mm -hmm. would this work? for a skating routine. Like I think other people and, and people have written us now and said, I've had that same thought. Yeah. And so it is, it is, <laughs> it, it is a bit of a universal thought. Absolutely. You took <laughs> all the way. I think it's just that I, the, the unique thing is I kept going with it instead yes. of just being sensible and thinking, oh, wouldn't that be fun? And you uh, keep having these thoughts because now that you've had this thought, like Sandra saw Oppenheimer and was seeing movement to Oppenheimer. Like, right. are you seeing movement when you see a bomb go off that's <laughs> like the planet? Like, do you have these thoughts now, Carolyn? I mean, not the bomb part, not the, I haven't seen Oppenheimer yet. What so. jump go with No, I, I wasn't seeing skating with Oppenheimer, except for Paul Wiley. But Carolyn, we do have our playlist now. Oh yeah, we're working on a playlist. Yeah. And we're, we're working on it. It is not ready, Sandra. <laughs> no, it's not ready, but it's all sorts of songs that could be choreographed by Carolyn Taylor. They're torch songs. They're all yeah. love songs. They're all... Yeah you know, tortured <laughs> songs. That we um, watched too, we listened to too many once and we haven't been able to listen to them yeah, since. Yeah, it was like, oh God, I never <laughs> want to hear that again. So, uh, so that's for future. That's for the yeah. live, you know, figure skating show. The tour. The tour. The tour. Um, yeah. Do you want to join? Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We could have Fine. an adult skating number. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Now, Carolyn. That would actually work. How did you pitch the show to Sandra and like meeting her for the first time and get yes. her to buy in? Because as you see in the show, Sandra's a little maybe judgmental at first. You know, so how did you? I'm acting. <laughs> <laughs> I was directed. <laughs> I was trying to give the co-director what he was asking for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it was i mean I, I zach and i were pitching it around uh we had a few production companies that were interested and it was uh julie bristow and vivica bianchi at catalyst um and specifically julie in that first conversation um she was you'd work together you know and knew yes, each other she, she was our one of our first execs on battle of the blades right cbc Yes. So they had a history. She also loved Katarina Vitt. So when I was speaking to her, it's kind of that thing, you know, with producers, yeah. I don't know if you've ever pitched a show, Dave, but that thing of you want to be with someone who wants to be with you. You don't want to convince someone it's a good idea or convince them that Katarina Vitt is compelling or that uh, choreographing to Whitney Houston is a good idea. You want the right. other person to light up and, you know, mm -hmm. want to go up the mountain. You don't want to drag them up the mountain. And really it was so clear with Julie that she was the right person and her connection with Sandra 
and she introduced us. Um, mm -hmm. And once I learned that Sandra had choreographed some of my favorite routines, again, in that, that time period, Casablanca, Singing in the Rain, uh, the Napoleon number in 88, I'm like, this was all Sandra Bezik? Like, that wasn't, I mean, I didn't know those things. She was on a glacier with Brian Boitano. Like, they don't exist anymore, glaciers. Like, no, no <laughs> they've all That's melted sad. away. Yeah. <laughs> She saw the last glacier with Brian. <laughs> <laughs> also, Sandra had a tour where she people still think that Brian Boitano and Katerina Bit were dating. Carolyn, okay, right. <laughs> Sandra did this. Okay, she's able to do that though. Yes, she is with her numbers. But it's, she's, I mean, any kind of performance is 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 acting, right? I mean, no. any kind of performance has a a level of acting. So, I mean, Barbie and Paul. Oh. Oh, and finding out, I mean, before I met Sandra, I was, you know, in my stage routine, I do a setup where I talk about what, that it's going to be Katerina Witt and Kurt Browning in this routine, because I still haven't realized that you can't take two single skaters and put them well, together you, in a pair's you routine. can, it's just sometimes isn't a good idea. Right. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair. But sometimes, it, well, I mean, Katerina and Brian skated together, so. True. True, yes. but I was looking for you know a pairs routine, right? Right, and you, you wanted throws and twists, and and I also wanted ripped jeans and a chair and a fedora, and again, these were all the things from yeah. from my youth that stuck with me. It was like, what? Mm -hmm. They're in jeans on the ice, but that's just wrong, you know. And the excitement of a chair, well, that's creative. Like, how, like I just <laughs> I bought into all of it. Well, and but she wanted a competitive. Broken. Right, well, I but you a wanted a competitive routine. I'm going, well, then you got to lose the chair and the fedora. Right. And then so, I decided it was more of an exhibition. My favorite aspect of this is that Carolyn never says Olympic level. And it's clear that she knows the term Olympic level, but she calls it a gold medal pair routine the whole time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's so brilliant. It's so fantastic. Like using these terms that you know are just driving Sandra crazy. Right? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> yes. And that's always I delight in that. I delight <laughs> in driving, driving me crazy. Sandra crazy. But I uh she had infinite patience for me. Oh my god, are you having a banana? <laughs> Damn, I wish I had yes. one. Oh gosh. Oh, God. I don't have one. And that again was not a, a preconceived choice. This would just the bananas became the thing that I was craving that were easy to eat. And then of course we start building on it. And next thing you know, why you are know, bananas so funny? Like what I, about it? It's just like I, just they're just ridiculous. funny. They're just <laughs> funny. And I think just back to the ripped jeans the barbie and paul routine especially to why'd you lie i mean when we get to show that in episode three like i feel like i want to scream off the rooftop if anyone does not know these people or these routines because of course you know most canadians from do, the but 90s. there's a generation who doesn't right yeah and and i think i have a soft spot or a something for people who are very like rules oriented breaking rules like whenever that happens mm -hmm. that's so fun and that's kind of part of the thesis of of this show i think we're all going into unknown territory right like and saying yes to the unknown and to some chaos i mean with discipline and control of course but yeah but yeah i mean that's what was so liberating about it so much we all had so much fun i know all the skaters had a blast every single one of them had a blast and then for me I, it, <laughs> I, well i mean i the the minute i met carolyn on our first zoom your first date i would yes. our first date first date yeah yeah we weren't alone <laughs> um it was like, you know sort of a double date maybe people but around you people know, around <laughs> Um, she had me. Well, I mean, in the beginning, I was really nervous about it when Julie called because I thought, oh, gosh, skating and comedy. And this is really scary territory. Um, but then when I met Carolyn, it was, you know, it just was OK, I'm in. 
you've, yeah. you've got me, whatever you want. But when I jumped into it, I also, I sort of had two minds. One, I sort of felt like the gatekeeper to skating, to the skating world and to all my friends. It was like, okay, if, all, if I'm asking all my friends to come play, they better have a blast and they, you know, they better really love this experience. So that was going on. But also, I was really excited, well, to just play with Carolyn, not just in choreography, but just on camera and, and, and however that went. I wasn't kind of thinking, I wasn't really kind of thinking of the result even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, and we would, I mean, stop rolling and we would keep talking choreography for hours. Yeah. Like we just oh gosh, couldn't. Yeah stop talking about choreography well, we would have four hour dinners four hour dinners in edmonton you yeah. know just <laughs> just talking shop talking choreography talking mm. uh potential and 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 making notes and plans and mm -hmm. it, it yeah it would i mean we were we were in deep <laughs> you did get in deep because you brought in one of Sandra's friends, Katya Gordieva. And <laughs> is that Katya? Yes. Yes. Oh my god! Of course, that's is Katya. Really? Look at her. Yeah, okay, I have Katya. I've got Katerina. Oh boy! Oh my gosh! Dorothy what are they wearing? Bob Mackie glamour, right? Oh my god! Oh, this is so fabulous! Oh wow! wow. Yes. Wow. Oh. I have Tessa Virtue. We have Dorothy. Oh, Oscar. yeah. With Matu's dress. Yes. It, so it, and Carolyn got to work with Matu. Uh, mm. I work with Matu. You work yeah, with Matu? Yes, what? and his costumes are like $2,000. <laughs> Matu played along. He was beautiful. He was so nice. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. he's so serious when he's drawing, you know, and he's mm. so... Et des fois, on parle en français ensemble, alors... Uh... Did you meet Hugo to edit down the music? Because Hugo's a gem mm. as well. No, or you don't know Oren Isaac. Um, mm. He was, he's mm. a, was a music producer, and, and he's somebody that um, has been involved in skating since Brick House. Okay. That's where, mm. when I met Oren for Kurt's Brick House with yeah. um, Clarence yeah. Ford, who did the choreography with Michael Siebert. So Oren did the edit <laughs> and orange the one who gave me my first strong no in episode three yeah okay so okay. back to katya i katya was like jackie o in america that's how they market yeah. and that's how we all like to preserve this image so seeing with her and with another man we're warming up to it you know we are we're still okay. you know enough time has passed we're allowing her this mm -hmm. grace because she's ours right she's the biggest legend in skating as sandra was basically just you know, fainting over her as she told this. Mm -hmm. So, but I have seen Katya be a little Russian to where, you know, they are a little standoffish sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I showed a couple Russians the trailer and the fact that it's Katya that you're choreographing, like they're in, right? Cause they don't have the Jackie O reference of her cause that's an American construct. They have like the champion of all champion reference. So yes. what is that experience like and getting her on board? I mean, well, I'll speak to the past first and then maybe Sandra can can build on bringing Katya on board. But um, when I watched the Olympics, of course, back in 88, um, while Katarina Vitt and Carmen, you know, captured my imagination in one way, watching um, Katya and Sergei skate, I, I remember watching and thinking, oh, they're perfect. They're absolutely mm -hmm. perfect. I've never seen skaters so perfect in my life. And the ease that you feel as a audience a simple audience member never having any fear you knew they were not going to fall nothing was going to go wrong you're not sort of watching on edge they created an ease and a joy and i just remember thinking she was the best skater i'd ever seen i i and the two of them i, I just couldn't I, there were no words and i remember i remember that feeling and so trying to reconcile that with the present day that that same person who was at the time, I think she's two years older than I was. So she, maybe she was 16, I was 14, something like that. So again, I just, I, I have trouble holding that reality. If I try to convince 14 year old, my 14 year old self that this has happened, I still can't actually. At present day me can understand that Katya came on board, but me from the past, absolutely was can't. Was your inner child like excited to meet her? Like what was your inner she child She doesn't doing? even, I don't think I, 
I, it's very hard to hold, to hold those two realities. But in the show, I really did try to lean into my 14 and 15 year old self. Like I really tried to lean into the, those naive qualities and the excited and the earnestness as well. So I do play in that and try to remember, you know, and which is not too hard to remember what that <laughs> felt like. Um, but Katya coming on board, I mean, that was extraordinary, Sandra. Like we had spoken to her on Zoom um, the year before, just when we were talking about the concept. Yeah. And was she maybe going to, you know, weigh in and say, oh, this is a dumb idea or, you know, give us something, a funny quote. But never did I imagine she would come on board and be one of the skaters Sandra, ever. Sandra asked me for a list of pair skaters once. So like she just I did. working on a project. Yeah. You didn't say why. And, right. <laughs> and then it just kind of, yeah. Yeah. Well, I knew who... Um, I wanted mm -hmm. for Carolyn, um, and, and, but I, I wanted to make sure that we looked at everybody mm -hmm. and, um, and also mixing and matching because I thought, I thought back then, maybe, maybe it wouldn't be such a good idea to hire an existing pair to ask an existing pair to, to join Carolyn because they would almost do it for her. Mm -hmm. Right. Like they would just, you know, put their tricks in a row and it would be done. And I thought that wasn't right or fair. So I was thinking maybe it's mix and match. But then also at the time, I, I, I didn't know that that Carolyn was really adamant about it being a pair and not a dance team. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a line in the sand um, and that was it. Yeah. But, and Sandra was but so in, shady about current skating in the best way. Oh, in the no, no. Way. Oh, yes, she was. Acting. Sandra can't <laughs> help but be inherently shady. Was, and if you've ever watched Sandra... I was being clenched. Oh, no, no, yeah, right. If you watch, Sandra goes, the pairs today. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> you're really technical. <laughs> and you're like, which means they can't perform for shit, right? And like, <laughs> and that's what that means. Oh, you know, wow. That's not what I meant. Don't put words Yes, it my is. Mouth. Yes, Don't it is. Put she kept being like, you know, the ice dancers have the performance. Uh, because as Bruno Marcotte told me, everyone that was in skating during the heyday reminds you that they were in skating when it was good. Like they they have to drop it in and can't help them. So, and they have the correct opinion, right? But yeah. We can't support that, uh, Dave, as two choreographers who have great respect for all the skaters and all... <laughs> Um, yes. generations of Olympics we and uh, current competition we we really can't weigh in on that thanks <laughs> now Carolyn there's actually a 40 year old skater from America who uh -huh. came back to competition she's now Canadian champion and she once performed to I have nothing but you can't see it on YouTube because of the music rights fabulous and Ah, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Actually, like a stress is it to get the music rights from David Foster? Like That was hard. It was hard. Um, I had to write the Whitney Estate. So that was the first step to get the Whitney Estate on board. And with estates, I mean, they can say no because they feel like it. Right, too, from the Whitney Estate. Like, are you writing to, like, Dionne Warwick? Like, who is <laughs> granting you this? I don't know. Who it like <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think I wrote it to the Whitney estate and our music supervisor, you know, sent on the letter, but uh, maybe it was Dion. I don't know. I don't know who received the letter, but you know, when I spelled out what Whitney meant to me in my life, you know, I was listening to Whitney at 12, 13 years old, you know, when that came out, I guess in 86, her first big album. And, um, uh, when my dog was dying, I listened to all at once and I just cried oh, yeah. and cried again and again. And, so all the songs on that album, they had a meaning to me. I learned about self-esteem from Greatest Love of All, you know. So I poured it all out in this letter. <laughs> this was a cover of Whitney this year. What's that? I'm skating to a cover of Whitney Houston this year if I want to oh. dance with somebody. Oh. Like, don't you want to dance with somebody? Carol? And feel the heat with somebody, please. Yes. Maybe yes. with Sandra, obviously, right? <laughs> like, as as... I would just fall. I would just be on the ice. <laughs> if you got to wear Sandra, like if you got to skate with Sandra, would you be in the Paul Martini like tight jeans or how would that work? That's a great question because obviously one would assume I'll play Paul Martini, you would play Barb Underhill. Uh -huh. But that's not really how it goes. But you I mean, could listen. switch back and forth. This is the thing. Because Sandra's quietly in charge, right? Like she's mm -hmm. 
quietly guiding the ship, but playing like she doesn't, right? Something she, like that. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just have these friends and they're going to work on this little skating show and we're Canadian and yeah, we're just, it's, it's we just hope deal. people like it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dave. Oh boy. <laughs> okay what else you want to know <laughs> oh, you really captured it well when you spoof can you do your best sandra impression because you really nailed the thing of sandra talking like she has a glass of red wine oh bathtub with the fireplace and like you <laughs> nail sandra of it all yes yes that was fun. I mean, and I remember we had a fraction of a minute to shoot that. It was like, yeah. you know, I'm in the yeah. middle of rehearsals with Katya and David. We're I on a pushed break. you to shoot that. You were going to blow it off. Yeah, it was like, do we? we were so, and I think, no. You've got to do it because <laughs> we had it planned. It. it was like, I knew it. Yeah. it was, do we have the time to get this shot? And where we were uh -huh. shooting it, um, we, there happened to be a fireplace upstairs in the in the sort of green roomish area. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we did. We knocked it off quickly. and that uh i mean just the sandra of it all like it's so perfect that you know i i made a conscious decision to become a choreographer before i knew it I was well no that with... was taken out of context it was taken out of context but <laughs> the I, whole show is taken out whole... of context <laughs> but i i loved i loved that the joke was on me i really did yeah. <laughs> and fabulously on her yes mm -hmm. it's just Where very she funny well, that's the best line. It's where she felt. Pardon me. It's where I felt. Yeah. Well, but okay. So, well, <laughs> there was a sentence after that that kind of quantifies <laughs> why I felt most comfortable at that level. But we won't go into it now. People can YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm I'm nervous. As you I'm, should. I'm I'm nervous right now. No, uh, oh. not now. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm uh, yeah of this show. Um, uh, yeah, I, mean, we're all I think I think everybody's fabulous. Everybody's fabulous. Carolyn's like, amazing. Pardon? Like, how did you get Katya on board to just be herself, Carolyn, and just full? Katya is always herself. I'm sorry, I answered for Carolyn. No, please. Oh. That's the thing about Carol, Ka Katya though. Like, like obviously she's on board, right? So you've, I don't know if you have a contract or, you know, she signed the waiver. Mm -hmm. So you have her on board, but then she plays it like she she doesn't know what Carolyn is going to do, right? She's, mm -hmm. She hasn't seen the idea before and she's, yeah. And she's pretty genuine. I mean, she really yeah. is very present and herself and she's funny. I mean, I don't know if people really, had given her her due as the comedian, but she's pretty funny. I find, you know, her observations and just how she is and that she was so game and she likes following the fear. She talks about that in one of our conversations later in the series, that when something feels scary, like that excites her. So she was really game, like she wanted to leave her comfort zone. And I have a friend, a Russian friend, and I said, how do I prepare for meeting Katya Gordiev? Like, how do I make a good impression? What do I do? And my friend said, wear your good sweater you know i got my choreographer sweater she's like make sure you're in a good pair of jeans so i made sure i was wearing like a really dark pair of my most expensive pair of jeans and she says make sure your hair is fluffy like make sure you look good when you meet katia Gordieva and offer her something uh so it's like okay i'll, I'll call your advice. but i mean we all have katia on a pedestal but katia is is she's just so ordinary to like she's she's so she's so normal and I mean extraordinary to us but to herself I think she's she's unimpressed with herself and that's what makes her so charming because she she's not a diva and she's not um she doesn't think of herself as you know the the, the greatest of all time well, Sandra, does Carolyn think of herself as wacky? Sometimes. I want to know I mean, about your, your Carolyn core. knows she can be wacky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But mm -hmm. oh, of course, of course. Uh, but yeah. the 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 challenge in this show, Sandra, wouldn't you agree? Was 
I mean, in that first a meeting with Sandra, so we were kept apart. We'd met on Zoom. Yeah, that We'd was done hard. a sizzle the year before uh, with Kurt, um, which right. was trying to pitch the show. But really, we'd spent, what, an afternoon together or something maybe on ice. And that was fun. But that was a year right, for the sizzle. Right. We didn't stay in touch. I no. don't think. I don't well, remember. We, were, uh, we sort of couldn't. We weren't allowed to. Oh, yeah. We weren't allowed to. That's right. Yeah. And we then we cheated. Apart. We did cheat. But before our first our first scene, we we didn't we didn't cheat. No, no, no. It was after we went skating. Sandra yeah. took me to the cricket club. I took her to my locals. Uh, what was yeah. the Mary McCormick? <laughs> yeah. Ice rink, yeah. Um, on the side, you know, because I needed to to brush up on some. I mean, I had a lot to learn, Dave. <laughs> But we were, yes, and we were kept apart. Where is this going? I'm not sure. I can't remember what the question is. I don't, but, I don't know. Oh, it was when, it was about the wackiness. So when no. Sandra says to me in that first episode, um, you know, Katya is our goddess, yeah. and this is no longer a joke. This isn't a joke. And that was a very real moment. And that, as a comedian, that's terrifying because you realize, oh, I can't just make a joke series. And I can't, I'm not no. gonna, I, I never had yeah. the intention of doing that or of just of making fun of the skaters. And I always assured everyone who worked on the project, I'm the one who will look mm -hmm. dumb, horrible. I'm the one who will look like the buffoon. You will look good and I will look naive, earnest, uh, uh, unhinged, <laughs> any of the above. I'll take that. You will be awesome. But that was a scary moment and a sobering moment knowing, oh, I'm not making a joke routine. I'm not just because you can engineer things with cameras and make a well, and, and yeah, you know. and that that's what scared me in the first place, like mm -hmm. way back before we met. That mm -hmm. is that it would be with a group of people who would do that, who would take everyone and make us all the joke. Mm -hmm. Because I think figure skating is good fodder for that. Um, but you weren't like that at all. No, that I mean it may be a little for me. <laughs> But no, you weren't like that at all. And that's what made everybody comfortable, I think, and to be as um, as real and as fun as as mm. you know as possible, really. Everybody wanted to deliver for Carolyn. So Carolyn, I want to talk to you about wardrobe because you had these like sweaters and this garb, but I always thought that a choreographer sweater, like it went around the waist and we like did it like this. Are this you in bike awesome. shorts, you little minx? Those are so cute. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm working from home, honey. All right. Okay. Like, yes. It's, listen, um, I, well, I wore, uh, we had no budget for hair and makeup wardrobe. So I wore my, these are You'll my see clothes. that. Like, you'll, <laughs> you'll see. Uh, yeah. And some days I'm like, oh, looking good. Girl, other days I'm like, what the hell? Like, how I mean, did you get that? so tired? So tired. I'm like just sitting on the rink with my red hat, like just, you know, askew. But I happened upon this choreographer sweater um, at a market in Prince Edward County, this woman, Terry Lipman, who just has an eye for sweaters and for clothes and vintage. So I scooped it up. I scooped up something for Sandra. I mean, I just, I was like, oh, I found the person who will outfit my, you know, choreography. Uh, what would you call it? Costume? I'm not sure. But once I'm actually on the rink, I was wearing, you know, I had a black shirt, I think, over the sweater. I think I was, you know, in an undershirt at some point. And, it, you know, I, I really... I think choreography is then adjusting, you know, taking off your lair, throwing on a thing, not even knowing how you look. I think by the right. end, aren't I in like high sock, high, high wool socks and Birkenstocks? Like there's some fashion that's questionable, like little shorts and long johns underneath. <laughs> like they just. <laughs> but I think when, when you actually do the choreography, the, the thing about being a choreographer is that you've got to forget yourself. And I think that that's what you did too, right? I mean, there, you came in as a comedian performer, mm -hmm. but then when you actually went to do the work, you you went through that transformation work. as well. You did the work. Yeah. You did the work. I have a question for you about socks because you like a good sock and I went shopping on vacation and like, what makes a good sock? So I got like a crossword puzzle sock because- Oh, oh that's good. Right, and then- You like words, you're a writer. We like pandas just because they're cute, you know. I mean, listen, very cute. And like a pug, you know. So for you, like, what makes a great sock, Carolyn? Like, did I well, do okay? Um, hmm. You did okay. I mean, you did. Like you a did well. 
you as an entry level sock, I think you've you've done very well the way you know I did well when I stepped on the ice, uh, you know, I did my best right. Yes. But if we're really asking the most of ourselves, I would say a hand knit sock um, is important, I think a soft a sock i'm assuming these are soft, but you want something that's soft on your feet. The socks that I gifted every Sandra and all the skaters I don't think we see all the socks being presented to all the skaters, but everyone got got a pair were hand knit by this woman Dorothy up near my cottage up north and she does them you know herself knits them and I buy all her socks because they're to me I believe them to be the most beautiful socks I've ever seen like they vibrate at a high frequency I look for she calls them four-way socks because there's no heel so I like a sock that you can rotate Sandra do you still wear your socks of course okay you know, yeah. and, and all the skaters were quick to tell me, well, we don't wear socks in our skates. But it's for after when you take, you know. Yeah, it's for after. But you and Dorothy should maybe consider leg warmers. She has made leg warmers. And yeah, I, and but, she's also made the know, kind of cut out the toe and the heel. You know, those Carolyn dancing. Taylor merchandise. <laughs> I'll be like, Dorothy, I know you're 95, but please. Choreographer. Please. Yeah, because I think they're coming back, aren't they? Or who they cares? They're nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Classic yeah. is classic. But how does one get a cutout of Katarina Vick? Because I think I need one for the skating lesson. <laughs> Do you want me to show you my prized possession? Yes. This and I would okay. like one of these in some way. If we, you know, is, it, is there a printing? Like, hold on. Hold on. Oh, just, you know, no big there deal. How Just, does one get this? Like this, how, yes. what one does is one is delusional to begin with. One has a beautiful picture of Katerina Vid in the, in the Carmen outfit, you know, from 88. And look up close, you can see, I guess she had a hurt knee. Yeah. yeah. Did we know this? No. Um, and then you ask for a life-size version of Katerina Vid to have with you for the shoot. Then they tell you that the pixelation, they can't blow it up that size. Would you be happy with, I don't know, I'm not good with, Spatial is she three feet? I don't know three feet. Uh, three feet. I don't know. I don't Ish. Know. I'm gonna guess. It's it's hard to tell, right? Um, two feet, two and a half feet, three feet. This was the biggest they could make her. Um, and then she ended up being perfect. I brought her everywhere. And how do you get her? I mean, I guess I'd have to talk to production. Could we? Do you think we could get Dave one, Sandra? It's 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 necessary. It's, I know. Eating lesson. But I want to know, you're a choreographer, so you now communicate ideas through movement. Mm -hmm. What is Katarina saying in that pose? Ah, mm -hmm. good question. Sandra, should we, we both take a step? Don't, out? no, no, it's the question it's for me. you. Mm -hmm. I would say it's like, oh, hi. I have <laughs> many tricks up my sleeve. Mm -hmm. This is the first welcome to my world and i'm about to move i'm here but i'm not going to be standing here for long so okay. come with me or well you're coming with me you don't have a choice mm -hmm. yeah that's what i see here well carolyn i want your perspective because you, this series is about an artist this series is about the creative process and when i was introduced skating as a five-year-old boy from new jersey right I saw this vignette, if you will. It, it was a feature, really. Oh. Uh, and it was about creation of my first favorite skater, who was like a Barbie doll, right? Like she was glitzed out and, and Sandra starred in it and she taught us all how to be a choreographer. And as a choreographer that you are, I would like your take on Sandra as the choreographer. And if you could walk us through, I don't know if you've ever seen this or not, but I- I, I don't think she, I've seen it. Can you throw it up on the screen for us? Oh, absolutely. That'd I have it. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. Sandra, why did you keep this from me? I don't understand. <laughs> the American team back to the top, but a living tribute. Wait, 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 works. You know, country the ladies free program. Eight. From the Tonight, it will all come down to that four oh, minute and 10 second program. Program. A lot of work. There's some Canadian O's being dropped on American TV. I just want to. Wait, point. what do you mean? Program. Program. What did she say? Program? 
correct. She's going to say process instead process. of process. Oh, you say process, of course. Was into creating that perfect Olympic program. And for Christy Yamaguchi, that work started almost a year ago when she got together with her mother and her coach, and they began the very tedious task of picking that right piece of music. Do you think this it's is too slow? We can not spend. We're not going to make Carolyn watch this whole thing. <laughs> no. Come up with Remove. a choreographer yes, who lives in Toronto. Uh, it is important music that she can possible. work with the music because it will be her job to make the music oh, and the moves come together. Uh, look at the computer. Then what I'd like to do is, is just sort of edit a number of versions and then see what's most comfortable because I think we, you can do just that word comfortable again? music. Three months oh. have passed and the music for the Olympic so program business. has been selected to check on their progress. Progress. Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm picking her up at the airport. Christy meets up with Sandra Bezik <laughs> you, Sandra. and moves in with her for the week. They will have five so days good. to choreograph her free program, and the first oh, step will be mapped out Sandra's tomorrow Jack. morning. Stop. Oh, dear. Oh, here we the go. first oh, thing Christy there. and Sandra do is listen to the music. Is there a then private jet in this? they'll try to get a feel for it. Yeah, Both of the them hear box. the edited version Look for the first sweater. time. For a long program, yeah. for a competitive program, it's very much filling in the blanks. Christy Cascard set the jumps, and jumps. It's, it's pretty basic how you do it. You do it so that they can be performed to their best. Um, and then you fill this in the so blanks with art. <laughs> then we have we a, we have a that, meeting of good. two alphas. That's Gucci's coach, Christy Kasgard Ness, will be arriving this. tomorrow to check on their progress. It's a visit which Sandra Bezik is a little apprehensive about. Apprehensive. I'm cool. looking forward to Christy coming, but I'm hoping looking that forward. it doesn't stop our work process, you know, by overanalyzing at this point. And Christy Yamaguchi needs time for this all to become comfortable. So I'm hoping that Christy won't be too, Christy Kasgard won't be too judgmental too quickly. Coach Christy mm. Kasgard Ness in arrives 30 right years early at Sandra Bezik's house after a long trip day. from Edmonton. <laughs> For you to watch yourself. You really need so Carolyn, yes. you have many <laughs> ideas. What is your next idea after skating? Like, do you keep these in a box? Like, what is going on with this brain of yours? <laughs> I know, this, this troubled, troubled brain. Um, first of all, just, wow, that was fantastic. Great fashion. Um, also learning that choreography is the moments in between. I didn't understand that. I thought it was the jumps and the, the tricks and Sandra uh, let me in on that. So that was a big part of my learning that it wasn't just saying, do the jump here, do the spread eagle there, death spiral here. It was all the moments in between. And that was a massive awakening saying that on the side. Um, definitely I need to choreograph again. I mean, I've spoken, I've yeah. met with uh, David Wilson and Sandra, of course. There's the Torch series. I mean, I think a live show would be really exciting. Like mm -hmm. a proper live show. I couldn't do it alone, Sandra. I mean, I think alone would be disastrous. N no, it, no, I mean, she knows how to do this. Dave, she knows how to do this. It's just more fun collaborating, right? Yeah. But if you were on your own, you you could totally do this. I mean, I didn't just realize more fun together. Tired. I learned that Sandra was a great, you know, sort of. Would you say like not guard, but you 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 protected the skaters when I was working. Yeah. Them. Well, that's yeah. I, I I did, and 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 I, I felt that. Well, that was important to me, but I, I think in, in, in terms of Carolyn's ability to choreograph, the, 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 I think what's really interesting is because she's a creator and, um, has, and a producer and a director and, and a showrunner and all these things, she has the vision and she has the intention of, of of what she wants to create and that's really what is key and the medium is different mm -hmm. and she's learned now the medium and how to communicate that um 
but she's 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 gone through the process but she she already had all those really necessary ingredients to be a choreographer so um I, I, I don't really think that there's anything that Carolyn couldn't choreograph. That's the truth. That felt very Wizard of Oz. It was in you all along. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but it's true. But it's, it, when it clicked, it was a really interesting moment of like when Sandra would yeah. say, well, what movement says that? And I didn't know what she meant. I was like, what do you mean what movement? Can, and then finally, it drops and you start yeah. to understand. And by that last day of choreography, when I'm working with them pre Edmonton, I don't know if you remember what episode, episode five, I think um, it's in me now. Now I understand what I'm asking for. It really is coming to life. Um, and you're not but, afraid of it either. No. You're not afraid to ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. And that only comes with the confidence of four days of choreography. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um what was I going to say to your question? Yeah, I think for anything I do well, anyway, I, I need to have the vision for it sounds so lofty and bizarre, but I'm just going to name I really need to see it and feel yeah. it first. And then I can gangbusters, I can go after it and try to create it. And of course, in that process, it shifts and it changes. And it's not always right. what you think it's going to be. And it's that allowance between you know what your preconceived notion what you think you're doing and the reality of what's being presented and having to be soft enough to go with that and say yes to that but also not abandon everything to push enough to to try to be true to your vision so as far as a next project i think it needs to arrive you know like sometimes the field goes fallow for a bit you know and then you you get the feeling for the next mm -hmm. project. I do have an idea, should there ever be a season two, I certainly can't say it here, but skating is part of it. Skating is part of it, but there's another element and a seed gets planted for it in, in season one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the Easter egg. I had a seed for your next yeah. project based on the show. You did? Yeah. Tell me. And I don't think a tour is big enough for you. You, uh -huh. tapped, you tapped into something because I think that you like pageantry. Mm. and camp over the top and I think you're destined to produce an Olympic opening ceremony there was oh, something wow. about this big <laughs> that you how <laughs> <laughs> you understood it and what makes it so fantastic oh wow imagine I pitched that and I'm like <laughs> so next season I'd like to <laughs> choreograph the Olympic opening ceremonies um Listen, that is, I mean, you just floored me that, I mean, Sandra, I, listen, how do you, I mean, I had trouble working with two people, like getting yeah. to, because when I do the stage routine, I play both parts, like I'm playing everybody. Um, and Sandra's so, never got to do it. They, okay. Sandra grew up with what? another Canadian named Sarah Kawahara who got to produce the opening oh. ceremonies. Well, no, she didn't produce it. She choreographed right. it. Crap, choreographed. Yeah, there's, yeah. Well, so, I mean, would she, you choreographed, she choreographed all the skating. Right, but yes. I mean, but did, didn't she do the other, like, you know, men running around his rings and stuff? Uh, like, I don't know. I don't, actually, I don't know. I think what, Carolyn could do she, all of it. Well, of course, Carolyn can do all uh, of it. <laughs> Listen. I mean, you if you both have confidence, why Lang needed to be there with a ski jumping man, like you really understood the beauty of the Olympics, and I think they need that voice to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, they need someone who understood it from the outside, and that's why I think you're the right you're the right person for the job. Davis, Sandra knows I'm very suggestible, so this is really a <laughs> dangerous conversation. <laughs> Like, could there be synchronized swimmers like that scene no. in like, the Great Muppet Caper? Where, you like, see, oh. yeah, I, Carolyn no. likes, likes, you see, I think Carolyn likes the more sort of piercing, intimate, emotional Sandra. vehicle mm -hmm. than the big pageantry. I think she came in thinking maybe one thing but I think the truth of it is is that it's all the the layers beneath 
that are mm-hmm. important to, to Carolyn. And I think that's why this whole series will resonate because she finds that and and experiences it. Don't you think? I uh, yes. Carolyn I on do. camera. Yeah. And I, and that's what and and and, and um yeah, I, I think it's the intimacy that resonates most with you. The storytelling, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the emotional intention. So maybe someone else could choreograph the big flashy campy number out on the field, the stadium. And then I'm doing like the pieces. Maybe there's like, I don't know, could there be like a, a strange sort of... um cross media platform like behind the scenes intimate moments before they go on a passionate embrace a you know <laughs> a, a small argument um <laughs> i don't know i don't know i'd have to think about it i have to think about it but listen you've planted a seed you know that and and my last question is like where does this relationship go like Sandra took you into her world. Like, have you taken it to uh, Sandra <laughs> and yours? Like, has she been to a lesbian bar yet? Like, no, has she... no. No, I mean, you've met some of my friends. Yes. I mean, May Martin, of course. Of course. And we had a great flirty storyline between May and Sandra that just, there just wasn't room in the series to have every yeah. storyline realized. It was through voice memo and, and in, so you can sort of see in by episode six when May comes back. I don't think I'm giving anything away here. There is, we were playing into a, a story that sort of had kind of ish existed throughout the series, but we just story couldn't. Story slash reality because true. May is so um, mesmerizing. Yeah. And I, you know, who doesn't have a crush on May? Yeah, they had chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where does this go, this relationship? Like, are you, like, uh, we don't have cottages, you know, in America. So, like, are are you cottaging? Do we call this together? What goes on? We haven't cottaged together. No, we haven't. But we we meet for four-hour dinners. Yeah, we've had dinner. And four-hour walks. Sandra likes a construction project. She likes to, like, be a poster. Well, Carolyn... Carolyn does all that herself too. She's she's got a tool belt. Well, I do have a tool belt, Dave. This this studio I worked on with my friend Phil, who is a contractor, and he was teaching me how to do the work. So I got all this lumber on Kijiji, and we built it together. Is Sandra also a soft lumberjack? Like, well, is- oh yeah, gender wise, right? Because Kurt, I was my gender is yeah. pretty fluid so i certainly was channeling soft lumberjack with... alpha with kurt i think i think oh definitely yes right yeah she's with a kurt? soft lumberjack yes he's the soft do you ever feel like a soft lumberjack sandra sure okay yeah we're all I mean, just playing gender uh, See, yeah what exactly. does a soft lumberjack feel like soft well i i, <laughs> I have my my plaid shirt yeah, you do have your plaid. Well, there was that whole storyline mm-hmm. that kind of got lost. Yeah. Right? But then I turn up in the shirt. Yeah, you slowly. Which is sort of like, why is Sandra wearing that shirt? <laughs> but it's Sandra, you know, wearing her queer shirt, which is like a pink, soft baby pink plaid. You know, did you even notice it in episode three? She's wearing it. We're at my house. We're having yeah. wine. We're, the cake is coming in. You know, I'm dissociating. And that's Sandra, that's Sandra in the queer world with a pink plaid. <laughs> yeah, I Except that the, the, the whole storyline didn't make it though until yeah. I had the shirt on. Yeah. Yeah. I have the shirt. Pardon? Sandra's I, the protagonist in Tales of the City. Is that's what's going on here? If like, you know, you're becoming a choreographer and this is like Sandra having her San Francisco awakening. This is what this show is. <laughs> this is really- what the show is. So season two, I'm well, choreographing and Sandra's running like the hot oh, new. Really? Yes. Yeah. I think we're all having different kinds of awakenings. All of us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Did you know that? In the series, like everybody Absolutely. had an awakening, one kind or another. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. Sandra loves an awakening. So I, I do. Was- 
I was reading I her book once. It's a, it's a really just simple title, The Passion to Skate. And it was about how this young girl from China, from, you know, a, a communist country, decided that she was going to um, remove her robe and stand naked before the world on center ice. And that's what she was communicating as a choreographer, center ice. <laughs> <laughs> and that was her meaning, so I <laughs> Well, aren't we always trying to kind of reveal ourselves and be accepted for that? Mm -hmm. Like, isn't that the quest? Yeah. And to make room for that space and for to that. make room for that. Yeah. Just and to, are, to yeah. not just be accepted, but to accept ourselves. Yeah. Our own and nakedness. We, and we are playing all the time. Like we're playing yes. all of these roles. And I yes. think that's playing series, dress up. We're playing yeah. dress up in in our careers, even sometimes. I mean, obviously they're mm -hmm. they're real, and we do them, and they take work and discipline, and you know everything. Mm -hmm. But it, at the same time, it's sort of exposing the part of play behind it, where we're all just trying on different identities and um, genders sometimes. Well, I can't wait to see what you do next. We are rooting for the success of this series. You are going to become a massive star, as you deserve. And we all are so delighted that you, you know, shook up figure skating the way it needed yeah. to be. So. Dave, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for bringing us on to the show. Sandra, I am in, I have a lifetime of gratitude indebted to Sandra for a lifetime of, of gratitude and small gestures. Um, <laughs> and um, thank you. And hey, who knows? Like, listen, maybe you'll get to talk to Katya and David or, you know, who knows? Wouldn't that be fun? It would be a blast. I know, see, see how it goes. But yeah, we'll see. I'll see you at the Olympic ceremony, opening ceremonies. Uh, right. If you can arrange that gig, that would be great. And I would um, like you to plan it in your mind before I, you know, before right. I light it. Yeah. I would like, you know, a sketch, you know, yeah, maybe a sketch okay. as one does with popsicle sticks. And you have you have a staff in your house constantly just like handling. <laughs> yeah, or, basically. You're like, yeah, yeah. get me a ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank exactly. you. Brooke exactly. and Jade. <laughs> They're fabulous. <laughs> and um, <Allison> and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. She has her entourage. She mm. does it. Thank you so much. Well, <laughs> Big stars should have entourages.